Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and great news today. The McCanns, Kate and Jerry, have lost their libel suit against Gonzalo Amaral in the European Court of Human Rights. Yes, they did. Ah, so happy. I'm so happy. And why am I happy? Because they totally deserve to lose. Now, I'm going to read you an article from the NBC site on this case, and I want to do commentary on the different things that they have said as to why they deserve to win this libel suit, uh, why their rights were were ignored and, and attacked by Gonzalo Amaral uh, because of his book. Um, so, yeah, let me go through this for you and point out what I think is a well-deserved loss. All right. The European Court of Human Rights ruled on Tuesday against the parents of missing British toddler Madeleine McCann, saying that Portugal had given them a fair hearing. And they had. They actually got two hearings over there. So a fair hearing. In their libel battle against former Portuguese policeman Gonzalo Amaral. The police officer who worked on the investigation into Madeleine's disappearance in 2007 on a family holiday in Portugal suggested in a book he authored, Truth of the Lie, that the youngster's parents had been involved. Okay, let me stop right here. He had every right to write this book because, as Jerry said, in public and on television, everyone has the right to purport a theory. They do. They have the right to purport a theory. He purported his theory based on evidence. As a matter of fact, I also purported my theory based on evidence. I wrote this book, Profile of the Disappearance of Madeleine McCann, and I posted that book on Amazon. I self-pubbed that particular book because, you know, it's hard to get a publisher to go behind you when you publish anything not so positive about the McCanns. So I published that on Amazon, and sure enough, I took it about, I think, three weeks, and then it was Carter Rupt. They sent their lawyers after Amazon, and they threatened Amazon with a libel suit, claiming that, you know, what I said in there was untrue. And I'd been very careful in that book to always write as supported by evidence, and this is a theory, and so on and so forth. So my book was pulled from the market. Uh, they were happy because not as many people would see what I had written, what I, how I had analyzed the crime. By the way, you can still get the book. It's on at Barnes & Noble. It's at Apple, Kobo, and Smashwords, and a few other places. But they wanted it out of the big public, the big site, which is Amazon. And that's where any author gets the most of their traffic. So they they knew what to go for and they weren't going to waste their time with the smaller, the smaller outlets. And for as far as Gonzalo Amaral went, wow, now he, they had to get rid of his book because it was influencing many people's opinions of the McCanns because he put the information about the evidence in the book from the police files. And he elaborated on that and he purported his theory and they didn't like it. So they went to the courts and had it pulled. Now, let me read a little further. Kate and Jerry McCann sued Amaral for libel. In 2015, a Portuguese court ruled in their favor. That was unfortunate, but, and they ordered Amaral to pay damages. And that, that damaged a tremendous amount of his life. I mean, when I met him in Portugal, because uh, we were discussing doing a book together, which I couldn't get, uh, my, my agent could get no publisher to, to do uh, in the U.S. So he went on to write a second book. Congratulations, Gonzalo. Um, and uh, the, But he really suffered a lot, a whole lot because of that ruling. But then two years later, the ruling was reversed by Portugal's highest court. Yay. Uh, and then the parents appeal to the European court because they don't stop arguing that their right to a fair trial, right to private family life and freedom of expression had not been upheld by Portugal. OK, let me stop here and comment on this. The right to a fair trial. Well, <laughs> they they did a whole bunch of stuff to prevent fair trials themselves. I mean, with their massive media campaigns where they. They had the media on their side later on, and that media supported their theories about what happened. And that went out massively to the public. So don't talk about, you know, affecting a fair trial. You just That's just ridiculous. Um, then the next one makes me laugh. A right to a private family life. 
Really? You wanted a family life? Let me think. Oh, when you were in uh, Portugal and proud to lose, if you wanted a family life, why did you go out drinking with your friends and leave your children unattended in the vacation flat? That wasn't very family-like, now was it? You neglected your children to have your fun single life without the children. So I think you kind of screwed up on the family life right there. And then because you went right to the press and to the uh, and to all, all the political people and you went after you went after the Portuguese police and ag antagonized so many people um, and just put your face in the, your face has been everywhere. Madeline is the most well-known missing child in the world and you're the most well-known missing par parent child of miss parents of a missing child. Let me get that straight. Parents of a missing child in the world. But you, but you didn't want that to interfere with your private family life. No, that's your doing too. And so the court didn't fall for that silliness. Then they said, um, freedom of expression. I'm not even sure what that means because they didn't like his freedom of expression, but they want theirs. So anyway, that's just nonsensical. Okay, next one here. Let's see. Um, the ECH ruling said that the Portuguese judiciary had not failed in its duty to protect the rights of the Macans, and that their arguments concerning presumption of innocence were ill-founded. Now, this presumption of innocence, in other words, no one's supposed to question their innocence. Well, you know, if you wanted to be considered innocent people, first of all, don't neglect your children. They didn't even charge you with that. Don't neglect your children and make yourself look like crappy parents who might have done something else to their children because you didn't care for them properly. Secondly, maybe keeping one story straight would have been helpful because you kept changing your stories so that you look suspicious. And then, OK, you wouldn't answer any of the questions. So now you look more suspicious. And then to top it all off, you run the country. So how innocent does that look? I'm going to say not so innocent. So. The reason people might consider you possibly guilty of something is because the evidence supports that, the physical evidence supports that, and the behavioral evidence supports that. All right. Now, there's one more thing that I find rather interesting. This is, this is the kicker of it all. We took action for one and only one reason. Wait a minute. You just gave us three reasons why you took action. Your private life, your, I think four freedom of expression, the innocence thing, the, yeah, all that. And then, but now you're going to say one and only one reason. Mr. Amaral's unfounded claims, they weren't unfounded. They were theories based on evidence. But it says Mr. Amaral's unfounded claims were having a detrimental impact on the search for Madeline. <laughs> okay, this is the stupidest statement ever. All right. Let me go back to the beginning. First of all, let's say she was actually abducted. Okay. Even though the evidence points elsewhere, but let's go with the child was actually abducted and the parents knew she had been abducted because they were not involved. All right. Now they're doctors. They're very smart people. And yes, they are parents who will always hold out hope, but they're also rash. They also understand facts. You know, that's what they, they, they should understand facts. The fact is almost every small child who is abducted uh, is dead within a few hours. Why is that? Because child sex predators can't keep a crying little three to almost four year old kid around in the basement for very long without them driving them nuts. So they use them, abuse them, and then kill them. So they're dead within a few hours. So you're not, it's, it's hard to impact a search for a live child when the child is not alive. Okay. Uh, but let's say there was a tiny chance that that child was alive someplace because she truly had been abducted. Now, the next thing you don't want to do, because they, they're, they're under this impression that some sex trafficking organization just had to take Madeline, you know, and start a big international to do, uh, as opposed to getting a kid from, you know, a drug addict or, or a prostitute or some sh orphan child. But no, let's go after some doctor's kid. Uh-huh, that makes sense. But okay, let's say they did. And they believe that she's been sex trafficked. So what do you want to do? You want to get your the picture of your daughter in every country in the world with that little eye problem too. You know, all over the place. 
so many places that any sex trafficker is going to look at Madeline and go, you're a liability now. <laughs> you can't, we can't have you around because as soon as somebody recognizes you, we're, we're done. You just killed your child off. So the more you put her picture out like that, the more she's likely to be killed really quickly. So who really caused all these problems? The McCanns. So now on top of this, <laughs> Let's assume that the child was alive and the sex traffickers for some reason just didn't want to kill her off. Um, she is the most recognized missing child in the world. I don't think his little, his book, not his little book, his book was a great book. His book, which some, many people did read, but not the whole world read. And he, he was certainly not, his stuff was not being seen more than every media outlets documentary that you all promoted uh, all in your favor, that didn't get as much play. So with the, 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 all these documentaries going out around the world, do you honestly think people aren't going to look for that child because of his book? No, it's ridiculous. On top of that, you took money uh, from people and hired private detectives to look for her. So I am not sure how his book made this massive difference in the search for Madeline. So that is just 100% garbage. Now, one last thing I want to say before I go, uh, there's, they've lost this case and they're supposed to pay for this, the loss. They're going to have to pay the fees. Uh, and I read online that they might be using the money from the fund. Really? Okay. So people contributed to the fund to search for Madeline. Now you're going to take Madeline's search money <laughs> and use it for court cases. First of all, I think that's fraudulent for the people who put money in. And secondly, you just, you know, you just bashed your own case about, you know, the search for Madeline being impeded because you would be doing that if you used the money in that fund for anything but. All right. So that's my take on this. I'm very happy they lost the case. They claim they're not going to appeal. Uh, I hope they don't because I want Gonzalo Amaral to finally be free of this nightmare and uh, read his second book, folks, because he deserves a good reading on that. Um, and check out my book, uh, Disappearance of Madeline McCann at all the places but Amazon. <laughs> and um, uh, if you haven't been to the channel before, please do like, please do subscribe, please do hit the bell so you can get notified of all the other cases that I analyze and look on my playlist for cases that you might be interested in and have already been done. Uh, I will see you next time and hopefully not, not with uh, another libel case in this instance. Bye-bye.